Kevin. How you guys doing? We're good. Thank you. And thank you for joining. Um, we'll go ahead and get started with a question for you from Sarah. Hey, Kevin, I know you guys are missing some important pieces tonight in Trey and DeAndre, um, but what led to this kind of rough shooting night, you think? Sometimes it just happens. Obviously, it's ugly, ugly game kind of all around, um, mm -hmm. sloppy. But yeah, we didn't make shots. Um, I think that's happened in a lot of games so far. We feel like yeah, we got some good looks. You know, it, it wasn't like we weren't generating nothing. I think we got a lot of good looks. It just we didn't make shots. And then yeah, we got a little bit stagnant. Um, just an ugly game kind of all around. How much changes and how much do you guys as a team have to adapt in a short amount of time when you, you know, when you find out Trey's not playing today, you know, and you have to kind of adapt and go from there? Yeah, it's an adjustment. Obviously, our offense has to change a lot. Um, a lot of what we do is, is Trey and pick and rolls and, um, you know, everyone kind of feeding off of that. So when he's out, um, you know, we got to kind of pick it up and find it elsewhere, obviously. Um, so, like I said, just kind of a sloppy game. Again, I don't think our looks were, were horrible at times, but it's tough. Obviously, you're missing someone like Trey. You're missing someone like D Hunt. Obviously, the other guys that we have out, um, it'd be nice to get some of them back for sure. Chris Kirshner. In what ways would you say Rondo has helped you guys on the floor this season? He's just a floor general. Um, he gets us into stuff. You know, he always really kind of makes the right play. Um, you know, a guy like Cam, obviously, he doesn't shoot a great tonight, but that happens to everybody. Um, he's he just he's an extension of the coaching staff. We kind of knew that coming in. We knew he was going to be like that. And, um, you know, if his shots fall in the night, you know, it's definitely a little bit different. John, how are you? Mel, how are you? I'm doing good. Could be better. Uh, of course, of course. Um, so just curious, how do you guys even prepare for a matchup like this tonight? I mean, you're coming off of a, a game last night. You're missing two of your starters. Just how do you even prepare? You can't – a lot of COVID protocols. I know you guys don't make excuses, but how do you prepare? You can't pay, You can't prepare for that, honestly. Uh, you know, that's why the NBA is such a competitive league and, and, and such a, you know, a meaningful league is because when stuff like this happens, it changes the, the dynamic and um, – you know, and, and it changes the way we have to think about the, the game um, for that night. So, I mean, you really can't prepare for it. You just have to be, you know, next man up, next man ready to go. And uh, just have to have, a, you know, that mentality. Chris Kirshner. Um, Rondo has struggled shooting the ball, but can you tell me what he brings other than that um, in a positive manner that he brings to you guys on the floor? No, I mean, he's a natural born leader, two-time champion. Um, I mean, you know, what he brings doesn't necessarily always show itself on the court, but his presence is felt. He has a relationship with every single player, every single coach. Um, he challenges us in the, individually as well. Um, I love having Doe in the locker room. So, yeah, shooting, or, shooting woes, whatever it may be, uh, that, that dude's valuable to our team. Sarah Spencer. Hey, John. Um, season low for you guys um, shooting the ball tonight. Um, can you – was it just one of those shooting nights, or can you diagnose, you know, why you guys struggled? I mean, I know Gobert is obviously a load, um, but just overall, um, kind of what was the issue there? No, yeah, I mean, um, obviously you got to give credit where credit is due. Utah being a – Definitely a great defensive team. Um, you know, I feel like uh, on one hand, they are a great defensive team. And on the other hand, we got a lot of open shots, a lot of good shots that did not fall tonight. And uh, you, know, you when you don't make open shots and at least try to keep yourselves in the games in, in terms of making shots, then uh, it's tough to compete. Nicole. Hi, John from Puerto Rico. What is what is for you the challenge in the defense on Donovan Mitchell, especially? Um, I feel like the biggest challenge for Donovan is trying to keep him, obviously, from getting you know easy shots. But he's real great at getting downhill, 
um, his floater game, his finish game, real athletic. Uh, so just trying to keep him out the paint and trying to make whatever he trying to make whatever he gets or does. Try to make sure that's on the perimeter. Um, you know, I played against Don, Donovan a lot, so always tried to lock in when I when I see him on the other side of the court. Back to Jamila. Don, I knew you touched on this a little bit already with your um, your shooting woes, but you personally, you kind of started going or getting it going in the second quarter towards the second quarter, the end of the second quarter there. Was it something you saw with the defense, the matchup? Was it rebounding? How were you able to get it going a little bit second and the third quarter? Yeah, trying to stay <laughs> um, be, just be as aggressive as I can. Um, obviously, without – Train the game tonight, you know, it definitely the shots were um, were different. Or, you know, I was, you have to, as I said, prepare mentally for the game in a different way. Um, and it's challenging sometimes. So for me, I felt like I sort of felt that rhythm uh, going into the end of the second quarter. And uh, I just try to, to be aggressive and uh, create some opportunities for my team. Okay, JC, that was the final question we have for you. So thank you for joining us. Thanks, John.